So, good afternoon, Sweta. All the best. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Such an excellent topic it is. Now, many people have done PhD on this. Ha, ha, sir, ha, sir. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether you have known one professor, Shankara Lingam. Uh -huh. from, he mm -hmm. did on this, I remember, because some tests, he, some measurements he wanted to do okay. in his throat those okay. days. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I, I was there, so... We allow, we asked him to bring his sample and then we did test for him. Okay. Long time. Okay. I remember his name is Dr. Shankar Lingam. I think he was in, there's a college called NEC in uh, Kovil. There's a place which is beyond uh, this. So okay. he was, so he did PhD okay. from okay. Yadapuri. Acha, acha, acha. <laughs> so, so, Dr. Dr. I, Sweta is also uh, thinking about starting a textile industry. Where these antennas will be embedded as a good design patch antennas on the fabric itself. Correct. Yeah. Sure. So nice. We can uh, we can join us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> In that venture. Definitely, sir. Yeah. We, this, uh, you have written electronics and telecommunication together, is it? Mm, now the department is no more just telecom, sir. It's become ah. electronics and telecommunication. Then apart from that, you have the electronics and communication. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Huh. Electronics and communication, electronics and telecommunication. Mm. Two are there. Yes, I sir. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. make sure that uh, the the campus recruitment is not a problem. That is a major thing. It was a bit of problem when it was only telecommunication engineering. Yeah, yeah. That is the, the same thing we used to face also. Uh -huh. Now I think... You have to tell them that everything, uh, yeah, all, every course is taught, taught correct, in correct. departments. So exactly. that takes time. Correct, sir. Right, right. So, very nice. So, we are wait, waiting to hear from you. No, 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 sir. <laughs> you are giving me too much hype. Even I have just started the work, sir. There is, uh, it's just all my observations put here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's how it has to come, you know. You then take some students who will work with you yeah. and then make a, they can also get a, this thing, get some papers published and then yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you can do that. That's yeah. how it is done. See, mm -hmm. this particular period where normally in summer we would have got a lot of students. Huh. Everything is lost, you know. This yeah. particular year, everything is lost. Right, right. <laughs> so, where is Dr. Pras Shiva Prasad? Yeah, I'm here, sir. I'm just listening to you. Yes. <coughs> water nearby. The energy level is quite low today. I'm very tired at the morning. Who? Ah, yeah. Shweta has been definitely, she's very tired. No doubt about it. See, morning till evening and intermediate. Uh, all housework, definitely, <laughs> that, uh, no doubt about it. No, no, I'll try to be as in, uh, energetic as possible, sir. Morning, yeah, I had true. a slight fever and a bit of shivering. I came back home now. I was in college in the morning. Is it? But but college, are they? If, uh, have they opened it today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, today they opened, is it? Sir is in college. You present sir is in college only right now. No, no, but is even the no college has it been reopened? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. today they opened, is it? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Huh? No, today, sir. after the they no, place, sure. because they of can... this five days uh, close, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, seven days, one week. Uh, yeah. Seven days. Is it because of that? Otherwise, we know that uh, it's a uh, institute are working. In so now it is so opened, is it? It's, college is open, sir, from today. I see. Right. Oh. Good. So, Dr. Shiv Prasad is also in the same department or is in electronics department? Uh, same department, sir. Department. I see. Last time we didn't meet, is it? When he, when he came? Uh, no, sir. He was there, but uh, yeah, we didn't uh, meet as such, I guess. We only met with my pretty ma'am and left. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was sitting with your ma'am there that day at uh, the room. Yeah. Then moved to that and came back. Right, right sir. 
then i i think we during i triple e it was a great gathering you know that we met in ms ramaya yeah. correct so, correct and you really class mm. see it is so nice to meet in an uh, academic environment <laughs> that is so nice once it was held in <laughs> that is few years back we it start feeling that we are young if we are in academic <laughs> yeah. no that's true we, among students you always we always feel young. yeah yeah yes <laughs> so we should start Shweta, ma'am, are you okay? Are you ready? Yes. Fine. Already, we have given a good introduction. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so give you introduction yeah. because the introduction. audience may be different. You should always give introduction. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, Dr. Uh, Shweta, she is working as assistant professor in uh, Ramaya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. She has got a lot of uh, credentials. Like she has been working in the domain of antennas for uh, few, last few years, and uh, she has done uh, several achievements. Uh, I mean, I request Dr. Shweta only can just keep up. <laughs> there is no. Uh, no. Uh, she has got a. You are tired. Of... Tired. I mean, <laughs> both of them are tired. No doubt. No doubt. He has. He has already passed. Okay, into the class. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, no problem, sir. I'll start over the time. I'll tell uh, if it can in interest the people. I'll tell what all over the journey, um, what all I did. So maybe that might inspire few uh, students or few people who are really scared and uh, want to pursue uh, the work on antennas. <laughs> Okay, I'll. Uh, so okay. today's session is basically on uh, wearable antenna. So if, if to tell a brief about my journey, I uh, I started work on antennas during my masters in 2008. So in RV College, my guide was Rukmini Madam and uh, Dr. Harishankar Sir. Uh, you many would have known them. Well, that they made a huge platform for me to like the subject. I mean, unless you like the subject, you do the project just for, I mean, most of them, most of the people ask me today also, I want to do PhD, can you help me with the topic? Now, all I can say them is, um, pick, do a lot of literature survey, do a lot of literature survey, find out, don't, don't end in a topic which is currently needed in the uh, market or something that is there, but pick a topic which you are very much interested in. Uh, yesterday, Malavia sir and Kala sir spoke to me on phone and they gave so many ideas which is nowhere, not at all related to what is happening with 5G, IoT. I mean, that's all we are talking about. It's that's needed. But there are a lot of other things which is happening in defense, uh, which is happening with respect to radar. Oh, there, there are so many things. So before you even enter into what you need to do, do a lot of literature survey, pick a topic which you like rather than... Uh, what someone says that that is booming, uh, you do that. No, that's where my luck started. I picked antennas. Uh, though at Arby College, uh, yeah, all had gone gone for their internships. I never wanted to work. So for me, it was like, let me do some project in college only. Um, and in those days, I didn't want to work actually. But uh, the so I picked a project, which was a naval research board project on uh, designing a <clears throat> antenna for a submarine. So from there, my journey of antenna started. As in then, I uh, completed the project there. Uh, my love towards antenna was 100% dedicated. So I'm very happy that even after 12 years, <laughs> the love is still alive there. <laughs> okay. So uh, after that, I simply started designing some... Uh, for me, uh, more than the theory part, working hands-on on the tools were interested me a lot trying different shapes. I started with fractals. We did something on uh, um, some, you, I don't know, people have heard of uh, uh, different fractal shapes, Sierpinski carpet and uh, a spider on arm. Uh, so the, the fractal shape is like a spider's arm. So this paper we presented in a conference in Ahmedabad and uh, Kalla sir was there. I met him in 2013, Malaviya sir and Kalla sir. That was the first time my work got exposed outside. So he gave me an idea, why don't you make an array of it in a shape which will appeal you, which will make it look very fascinating. 
So we put the same, I don't have the pics right now. I'll try to get all those uh, things in the next slide, next session probably. So we arranged those uh, spider arms in such a way that it looked like a swastik. So we um, we named it as a novel swastik shaped spider on arm antenna. We published in the next subsequent IEEE conferences and all. So yeah, and I did, we, uh, we did with, with, with S, um, I am, uh, Blessed to have my colleague, my friend, my guru, Dr. Vishwanath sir. So with his uh, guidance, uh, we have worked a lot. We have tried some metamaterial surfaces, uh, structures also. We have tried some frequency selective surface also. Because, so the topic right now, what I'm talking is on wearable. The first point, what anyone who wants to even buy this product is, he would probably ask, him, what is the power and what is the power which would enter my body? So I, the two things I have to take, make sure the antenna works properly, communicates to whoever it is communicating as a health monitoring device or a GPS device. But at the other end, I should make sure it's not affecting human body also, right? Two major important things. So antenna as such in a free world, if it is working, it's not good enough for me. So I should look into the other side also. So lot, as you can see the slide here, below the antenna, there's a structure that's a FSS, frequency selective structure, very good as a reflector. So I'll talk more about it in the next slides. So what makes you think that we think that wearable is important? So any communication, if it is seamless, seems very nice for us, no? So it's as good as uh, um, um, in my, uh, no, first time when uh, cell phone came and uh, uh, my dad got the phone long back, 20 years back or something. So he he was very fascinated, and the moment he uh, then the switch over when you switch over from base stations, you I mean there was a beep or something came up, and nowadays he still remembers and says whenever I travel wherever I travel I don't even know that this, it has changed something has happened change over the signal getting deteriorated whatever, so the point is it has to be seamless. So when I am communicating, let it just happen on its own. Why should I even know where the equipment is? Why should I know I should go near the equipment? If it is there right beside me, I'll do whatever I want, whenever I want. I just All I need to do is just communicate, not bother about where the system is, okay? So when that point came into picture, uh, it, was, uh, it was thought that why not wearable? I mean, it's always with you, right? Yeah. So how did the problem started. So when we started the problem, we didn't much think about the human body implications. So we all thought about let's design a proper antenna, comfortable, and then let's decide what is happening to the human body. Is it affecting a lot? What is the standard given to us? How will I make sure it does not uh, affect us? And how will I make sure these uh, uh, for uh, standards which are given up with respect to power is maintained and very uh, maintained less? So first thing was, yes, what kind of, uh, if it is a wearable, what kind of antenna am I using? What kind of substrates am I using? Will it give me a good impedance matching or not? So we all are very much aware of few substrates like uh, FR4, RT, Duroid and all. So when it comes to wearable, can I use them into my, yeah, I mean, putting it on a fabric or can I wear it? So that's the question which comes up. So should it be on um, fabrics or should it be any other material which is better than that? Okay. And then what comes is the second point which says additional slot can be ordered, added to increase bandwidth. This I'll keep for the later discussion. So bandwidth somehow uh, or we do absorb radiation, right? When some uh, equipment is right beside us. So I'm not talking again in terms of body uh, absorption. I'm talking uh, in terms of the antenna system getting deteriorated. There. The radiation of it, it's getting hampered, right? So uh, what can I do so that I increase the gain? I increase the bandwidth. So those things also came into picture there, okay? So the first point was, let's make it wearable. And then, yeah, so this is just the basics. Antenna is definitely needed. <laughs> So what if I integrate these wearable antenna, which is on different substrates? So let's think about, or let's talk about substrate in the later slides. So when I'm talking about a wearable antenna, so it should be, it will be integrated with sensors, of course. Um, yeah, in the next slides, we'll tell what kind of uh, transmission we had set up at 2.4 gigahertz. We readily get a transceiver. We readily have the microcontroller provision. We can buy the sensors, integrate, 
everything is easily available how many we we can play around so many things there um it can be so the application could be health monitoring or could be any other application which which makes which uh, uses these sensors right beside you okay so wearable antenna was thought to be a very good thing and then yeah integrating them into clothing would be very good if i uh, take any uh, flexible substrate so i uh, yes flexible substrate when i say the thickness of the substrate should be as thin as possible so that i can bend it conformal kind of substrate which we discussed in the last session uh if it is <clears throat> a textile material as in what i'm wearing right now a cotton one or a um, jean or a um, polyester silk i mean uh, you need to try with all all kind of fabrics too but then again all the fab fabrics are thin enough so that uh, so that it is very comfortable lightweight flexible and gets easily integrated into your clothing and uh, fabric materials when we take has a very low dielectric constant this this also made us very happy to start the project because lower the dielectric constant will reduce the surface waves and improves our bandwidth okay. uh, the dielectric constant what i'm talking about is around 1.7 1.82 2.1 in in those categories so lower as low as dielectric constant it is looks like what i am uh, if assume the substrate dielectric constant is 1 or 1.1 the dielectric constant in air is 1 right so if this is as low as possible the energy which is where did that my daughter's box go okay that was very nice to explain everybody okay. i have something better today uh yeah we were talking about this i assume this yellow thing is the substrate if this is as thin as possible uh, and the dielectric constant of it is as low as possible looks like i am communicating in air itself no so that makes us the, that reduces whatever inner electric field emerges here will easily reach the ground if the dielectric constant is low not go to the left right or something inside the substrate and cause surface waves so that's very good so that one point uh, uh, thrilled us or interested us to go into this um, uh, using textile material as <laughs> the substrate okay so body centric wireless communication so i mean it basically says your communication is completely oriented to towards your body so which i can talk in terms of uh, personal area network or in terms of in terms of body area networks so ieee standard is the is the latest international standard which is already given for uh, wireless area net uh, body area network also so what is the basic conclusion which we can draw from what we have discussed so far is a short range extremely low power wireless communication within or in the vicinity of the human body so that's the aim so this was the aim or the motive which was set to design our antennas further short range yes i mean we um, i cannot directly talk into getting a bulkier arrays to increase the range or something or i can give more power so i cannot do that no so the initial plan was let's start slow a short range with uh, which consumes as low power as possible it is very small as possible so that um, many other things when i say small antenna also bending is something which comes in a picture there i can't make the structure as too big though i can easily put it on um, on my chest or at my back but if i am planning to put it on my arm or somewhere wherein the circumference here is very small i it bends so when the antenna bends the performance again changes a lot okay so we thought let's keep this antenna size also as compact as pos possible and then do something with it a body centric wireless communication so it could be off body on body or inside body i mean Uh, off body on body i agree inside body needs uh, real precise work because uh, if i say i have designed an antenna i need to put it inside you to check your uh, gastric level or something who i mean it has to be very accurate to do that so in inside body or something i, I have not tried it but this is an option i mean yeah, you can have we can have that what, what is the different applications right from medical healthcare so as good as uh, assume a patient uh, is admitted in the hospital and he is completely annoyed that every one hour the nurse enters uh, 
um, to check his uh, health conditions or whatever, he somehow not happy with it. But assume the the costume, the dress which is wearing, does the part. Okay, does everything. So probably his pulse, his BP, his temperature, everything is checked seamlessly. And that through uh, through this, uh, I mean, if I do the communication at 2.4 gigahertz, it will easily tap the uh, Wi-Fi, which is right outside his room, probably in a reception or something. That is good enough, no? That, I mean, the guy wouldn't even know that uh, uh, the information is being set. And, and at the end, so I, uh, if uh, something goes wrong, the person or the doctor would be intimated about it. Yeah, sports and fit fitness monitoring. Um, as I told, Vishwanath sir is working a lot on these things. So, and then it can be used in military security, military, yes, uh, GPS location or many, many, many other things. Probably end of the session, if we have a discussion, uh, I can get lots of ideas here. Where can I use this? Yeah, we can have in gaming, entertainment, sports, Okay, so the challenges, it's all, we already discussed this. So compactness is important. I need to have desired radiation characteristics also. I cannot have a radiation pattern uh, which is perpendicular along my human body. I would not be happy with that. So how should the radiation pattern be? Okay, how should I design my antenna in such a way that the radiation here is along the body is parallel, not, not perpendicular to it. So do those things to be taken care of. Um, yes, low cost, lightweight. Uh, when I say low cost, I remembered something. I used to ask few of my students to steal their mother's uh, nice Kanjivaram uh, copper threaded sari and all. So you just have to remove that copper thread, uh, do it on your own, just give input to it and check if it will work as antenna or not. <laughs> I mean, none of them have come back for sure, but that's a very good, nice thing to do also. <laughs> okay, lightweight. Multiband operation if I need. I mean, yeah, it depends on what kind of uh, <coughs> uh, parameter you are uh, trying to sense. So depending on that, and there are, uh, I need to have stable performance under many varying conditions. Uh, what are the varying conditions we'll see? For example, the body temperature changes. Um, what if I want to reuse my cloth on which the wearable antenna is printed? Okay, so that is something which I need to take care of. Many other things uh, we will see as and then we go along. So what is the, what happens if I wash the cloth and again use it back? Um, we tried one such. We had designed an antenna. We tested it out uh, uh, for its impedance characteristics. We tested uh, its performance in anechoic chamber also. It it is washed and kept ready. I am waiting for the uh, for uh, to get a provision to test them. So due to these corona times, we are not able to test. I mean, use uh, test and go out and test anywhere. So if if even after washing, the antenna performance is not deteriorating much. Wow, that that will be a very good thing to do. Uh, yeah, you can put a lot of other um, plastic things to encapsulate. Many other alternates are also there. But we need to definitely take care of what are the other changing parameters, but still my antenna is performing well. That that needs to be noted. Okay. And uh, why does the performance uh, or impedance matching would detune? So if the antenna as such standalone works very good, I mean, when you put it on something which uh, embedded on some device wherein you need to use it, as in your cell phone, as in your body or whatever, near, your, near the vicinity of your body, so the, tem the conductivity, the resistivity of human body also comes in a picture. So in precise, if I want to tell, there will be a shift in frequency. That's what majorly we understood. Uh, there are some uh, results also, which I'll share you soon. We designed an antenna at 5 gigahertz. Then again, 5 gigahertz was a very easy way for us to escape the 2.4 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz because designing a higher frequency, the size of the antenna reduced reduces. Uh, we know that. that as the frequency increases, the wavelength reduces and hence the structure of the device also, uh, antenna also reduces. So we thought, let's start with the high frequency only. Let's see if it's working or not, just to make sure that the wearable antenna works. The size was around um, 3 by 3 centimeter, uh, very small enough so that I can easily put it uh, on my arm for testing or whatever. Yeah. And Antennas alone at 5 gigahertz worked perfectly fine when we tested it on. And when we had 
put it near the vicinity and test it for the same performance the s parameters or uh, the it's it shifted its frequency to other side so that i need to take care so my challenge would be do should i uh, design the antenna as such or should i consider the human body parameter and then design that yeah because we we it was observed that the frequency is going to change okay and how about the radiation characteristics so on body communications usually prefer omnidirectional radiations so this is one important thing it should be in a plane which is parallel to human body you, okay not perpendicular so that i can minimize the penetration into our human body as much as possible not completely but at least a bit okay so this one you we need to care, be uh, careful the radiation characteristics should be uh, in a plane which is parallel to human body okay and uh, one more thing is on a substrate we put the antenna and the and the bottom of it is the ground plane so this ground plane itself acts as a kind of reflector so the radiation wouldn't penetrate inside so assuming i have kept it like this so the ground plane which is there at the bottom of it um, also helps in uh, absorbing some of the radiation uh, uh, so that it does not enter the human body okay a few observation which we saw was yeah the first thing we definitely know it the second thing talks about uh, what is the bending and tumbling issues so bending has a very great impact uh, with this uh, this is all by um, uh, um, either through simulation or through uh, just this is through uh, simulation or um, uh, every time we need to keep testing through the vna at least i mean all i need to know about this is uh, uh, radiation apart at least the impedance matching have i got it perfectly at the frequency what i have designed <laughs> if i know that that will be get better but because it makes a huge impact antenna as such and when i bend it uh, okay i do have some variable antennas that don't like that and crumpling is uh, uh can you please get all those things which are on my table well, no 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 in my room complete antenna ka jo bhi hai okay uh if we we observed this in um, in one of the embroidery antenna uh, i have not yet started it but yeah we didn't know what to do so we got copper wires and try to pierce it inside the fabric we had printed or we had uh, traced the antenna design okay thanks so during embroidery or if you are stitching the antenna uh, on on the shape which is printed on a fabric uh by uh, conducting threads or something so i'll tell you what are all the options of uh, having a wearable uh, device so in that there was uh, this coupling happening and it 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 would affect the antenna performance with respect to shifting the frequency with respect to its bandwidth with respect to respect to its uh, s parameters also reflection coefficient also would change so i should be very careful with that and uh, one more thing is where should i position the antenna okay the other challenge yeah um, where will i place it so that also matters a lot uh, some place wherein uh, it's complete mass or something which would not even if the radiation penetrates would not affect you um, those things and what should be the gap between what you are with the fabric or what whatever antenna you are designed to the human body what should be the gap of it is it very much uh, sensitive to it or insensitive to it Th that also we did a uh, quite study we placed the i mean we had the gap between them as uh, 1 mm 2 mm 3 mm till we went to 5 mm didn't make much difference with respect to the impedance matching and with respect to sar sar is specific absorption rate the amount of electric field which is entering the body it didn't make much difference but yes the gain had a impact of it uh, something changed with respect to its gain but uh, the once i designed the antenna with the human body uh, condition and all it, it didn't make much difference with respect to the reflection coefficient okay so these are the few things which we need to keep uh, thinking and keep planning as and then we start the research when I mean, all i am telling you is i have not done too many things with wearable but 
the initial few observations done probably if you can note them down might help you if you are actually it will get easier for you you exactly would know what i should do what i should uh, check so this 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 session is mostly about that i will only tell you my observations which would help you in designing the variable antenna in a very easier way okay yeah here comes the very big by guy specific absorption rate it's it's defined as the power absorbed per mass of the tissue okay it's given by this formula which which basically speaks about what is the conductivity of the material what is the electric field and what is the mass density okay uh, so it's usually india it, the sar limit is 1.6 watts of power can be taken into the body of with i mean taken into 1 kilogram of or any 1 gram of tissue for any 1 gram of tissue so this is the rule given there so uh, i need to remember that if i design my wearable device the sar should be less than 1.6 watt per kg i cannot play with uh, increasing it more okay the in ic nirp has given another standard so this depends upon uh, we indians the africans there so it's uh, uh, i mean the characteristics would definitely change there so let's stick on to what is what we are supposed to Understand by FCC, the Federal Communication Commission has given us the range of uh, 1.6 baht per kg. Okay. Okay. What are all the effects on human body interaction? So, due to high permittivity of body tissue, the antenna resonant frequency will change and detune it to a lower one. Okay. So, I we just discussed that antenna fre resonant frequency shifts when it comes near here. The reason is the permittivity, a very high permittivity of these body tissues. Okay. And relative permittivity of skin decreases with the increase in uh, frequency. I mean, relative permittivity of the skin, if I have to bother only about, uh, am I, when I'm designing, so far I have not much con considered about the complete heterogeneous structure of this variable. That, I mean, if you need to be very precise, you need to take a heterogeneous one. Or initially we started with a homogeneous structure, which consists of the skin layer, the fat, muscle, and everything. So, and from there, we started um, including a human phantom for our study. Due to the loss of human body, um, some part of radiation power of an antenna will be absorbed. And we know that, yeah. So, anything beside here, the absorption is taken, and hence the amount of an, uh, uh, radiation which antenna would be throwing will be less. And hence it would result in lower gain. So I should do something that, uh, see, if I plan of doing something wherein the absorption is reduced, when I do make sure that is happening, automatically one more thing gets, uh, uh, I mean, gets beneficial. That is the gain is sustained there. Since the absorption is happening here, the gain is reducing there. What, uh, what if I do or uh, create a structure in such a way that the absorption in the body is reduced as much as possible and at the same time the gain is also not much compromised or not much reduced so analysis uh, this 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 uh, we checked in uh, the software uh, tool ansys hfss uh, which gives us the average sar local sar as you can see from the diagram to the left it it says that the value of SAR is point, okay, 3.6 into 10 power minus 1. It's 0.36. So I can definitely use this antenna or the antenna structure, what you see there for variable application because it is way below 1.6 watt per kg. So you see two structures there. So one is the antenna, the other one is a reflector. So with without reflector, the SAR was too high, very high. So we thought what can be done to reduce SAR so we simply use some FSS structure. These frequency selective structures are has its own uniqueness uh, or metamaterial structures or electronic band gap structure, EVG structures. So these structures helped us. Because what it does is it, it absorbs all the radiation. It just not absorbs. That's the interesting part. I'm not just putting a reflector there. Reflector would be just something which is absorbing the energy. This, this reflector, this FSS structure absorbing and putting back towards the antenna side so now antenna has double advantage the gain is not the gain is gain shoots up a lot uh, if the reflector was not there so this reflector is playing dual role it's absorbing all the energy so that it doesn't reach the human body 
at the same time it is throwing that side to the side of antenna hence the gain has increased a lot printing effects okay there's a, a i read in few article which says if your antenna size or something is around okay if if i have to place in the smallest part of this this is around average people around four centimeter by four, four, four centimeter or five centimeter something somewhere wherein you can place it so that that bending effect does not come try to if you are starting the research on wearable antenna um, you just have to con a bit and uh, tell to yourself let me choose a size of the substrate uh, size of the antenna as small as possible so that uh, i will not readily get into the bending structure right away okay that's the reason we started uh, building the antenna at uh, 5 gigahertz, the antenna structure was very small, hence uh, it didn't affect much. So now we are trying into bending. We, we are. Uh, so, what happens if we bend? A lot of uh, the radiation pattern itself changes. Uh, sorry, the impedance matching changes a lot. The reflection coefficient or the return loss, what we call, changes a lot. So, this is the two antennas which I'm talking about. Uh, the different shapes, what made me design these shapes, I'll let you know soon. So th this is in, on a cotton fabric. Uh, the fabric, what you see is cotton. At the bottom is the ground plane. Uh, uh, there are uh, photos put on the slide. I'll show you one by one which you go. Yeah, then again, if I start bending it, what kind of impact would it uh, uh, make? So the, resonant, the frequency would shift, and at the same time, the reflection coefficient also will have uh, re deteriorated. Okay, so what should I do if the frequency keeps on shifting due to many reasons now? So the first reason what we observed was the frequency is shifting because of human body, the permittivity and all that. Now the frequency is also shifting due to the bending thing. So uh, then again, uh, a easy way was, why don't I design a, a quite a wide band antenna so that this even the frequency shifting would not impact me so much. See, I know there's a problem. We need to stick to that to rectify it. But uh, probably we thought in another way, uh, another easy way so that initially let it go in a smooth way. And then we will tackle one by one important cases. So then it motivated us. Why don't we design a wide band uh, antenna? Um, uh, ultra wide band antenna itself. Hence, as you can see, these structures, what I'm showing you right now is uh, circular. Okay, so last session we told if I want a resonant frequency, I'll straight away jump into a rectangular patch. If I want even thinking about a wide band, all I need to do is get into the circular shape. And then it's not exactly circular. There are a lot of slots put into it. Why? We will see that later. So the point is uh, get a wide band. So even if the frequency sh shifts a between your center frequency, I mean, in the wide band, even the, the whole bandwidth shifts your center frequency or frequency of communication is definitely there. So wouldn't much uh, bother you for that. So positioning, yes, where should you position? I mean, at the start, you need not think about it. It's just that if it is a, a bigger size and you need to put it on your arm or somewhere, then it would, it would definitely end up in bending. Yeah. So where you are placing, you make sure. Uh, and then you can decide the uh, size of it and everything. So coming on to what kind of substrate are very feasible for using in a wearable device. So I, I should just wear it and it does it work. Okay. So textile material, why can't I use the textile materials, the fabric itself as the substrate or you can also use this textile material as conductive material also as, as we told these uh, copper bonded saris or whatever, any thing, I can directly use that as an antenna itself, not as a substrate, as a conducting material. Okay. Yeah, it, it will be wearable, durable, and flexible, of course. Um, yeah, the characterization is important. As much as fa it fascinates uh, that uh, let's do a wearable device, there are a lot of hidden uh, um, agendas there I need to take care of. Uh, uh, it differs the what happens if the person i mean behavior changes uh, from person to person wearing it because of his body temperature that would definitely change i need to take care of that 
what happen uh, if he is wearing this and going out in sunlight or whatever and what happens if the if he sweats a lot he has positioned it in such a place that he sweats and would the performance of antenna change so many many things to to be um, thought about and textile material generally have as we saw already a low dielectric constant which reduces okay the same point it is okay what are the factors which would influence the performance of the textile antenna is the permittivity okay and also the loss tangent so uh, uh, what i need to know is the dielectric property here um how would i say the dielectric permit uh, dielectric constant of the material uh, epsilon it has two components the first derivative and the second derivative the second derivative is the one which is dependent on the frequency so i will have to be a bit very careful because the skin the human body performance is a very high permittivity so i need to take care of this epsilon double dash uh, how does it impact on the frequency temperature surface roughness okay moisture content what is the purity of material okay um whenever i say my friends that i have uh, um that i have uh, used uh, i have bought a material or if i tell one of my friend you please lend me your uh, um jean or something or for whatever reason it is i want to you build an antenna I and mean, they they definitely laugh at me because uh, yeah the purity of material is definitely not not uh, uh, i mean it's co completely compromised there so what kind of where would i find this material wherein now uh, we get a uh, i mean the texture or the evenness of it lot of things matter there if i consider the same cotton and jean material the texture is not uniform there we were in the cotton or a flannel material so flannel feels very sophisticated but uh, the texture i'll tell you what that material is so we need to study that so that it's uh, homogeneous the structure is homogeneous it's as pure it's uh, clean and what happens if dust enters it if it has become dirty can i reuse it how about the moisture content oh, how about the surface roughness also all these things to be taken care of so here comes few uh, sorry sorry i'm very sorry the serial number is uh, um, not named properly not numbered properly sorry uh, let's forget the first uh, column so the second third and fourth basically tells you what are all the fabrics uh, no no, no. Th these are only few 11 or 12 fabrics which i have mentioned here and uh, all these have a very low dielectric constant as you see 1.6 is where it starts 1.5 1.45 maximum it goes up to 2.12 okay and we compared all these things with fr4 also so just to make sure and uh, very confidently tell that yes you can don't want need to use fr4 you can straight away use these fabrics so many fabric play uh, acted very 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 weird uh, silk was the silk not silk lycra was the worst performance uh, you know, fabric which we came across um whole skin palama and all i'll tell you what those fabrics are did a very good job um, whole skin or tween is the one which we use to clean our uh, specs which is there in our specs box so that structure also very gave a very good uh, that that fabric also gave us a very good performance so here i mean there are n number you can put your hands on to anything all you need is if you are very handy with a vna i mean if you have vna is readily available with you you just can play around any fabric the antenna size would not antenna shape or the copper strip which are fabricating on the substrate I, i'll use the word fabricating there are many methods to put this copper strip onto the textile uh, fabric okay so if i it, that is not going to change all you are changing is the substrate so if you have the access of vna uh, easily easily easy access of vna you can try play around or else we uh, the simulation tool will do the job okay what should be the thickness of the uh, dielectric fabric so thickness more the thickness uh, it would directly impact on your bandwidth uh, so it's it's um, always uh, advisable that you take the substrate as thin as possible uh, we know that i mean dielectric constant is less it's as thin as possible surface wave reduces to maximum mm -hmm. and at the same time i would get a conformal shape also okay and uh, what is the other thing should i bother about the electric electrical surface resistivity of conductive fiber so that also should to be taken care of yes then again the moisture content and all 
the, the surface resistivity basically speaks about what is the thickness of the conducting fiber what i'm using what is the uh, what would be the conductivity of it and what is the surface resistivity of it um to, at a start we didn't much jump out, uh, about uh, we didn't right away jump into what to what is to be done uh, with these equations and all all we did was uh, uh yeah one of my friend got uh, a flannel material the other one got me a jean material uh one one of my other uh, yeah i got many things readily available uh, one of my friend even helped me in getting a copper wire to do the embroidery structure i mean uh, it, it says you no know, when you plan something to do uh, by heart uh, things come to you easily readily so i got help in a lot of way uh so i didn't cling on to the equation part so much uh, we just started uh, uh, simulating and fabricating it and one by one we are checking what is happening in bending and all those things okay and uh, what is the mechanical deformation of the dielectric and uh, conducting material okay so we spoke about bending right how about the elasticity not every material as uh, are as rigid as possible right uh, uh you can stretch even the cotton so how should i use the fabric so that uh, these uh, silly things could be taken care of okay i mean it, it sounds silly but makes a huge impact if i stretch the fabric and place my antenna by some means and if i uh, leave it as it is and use it it makes a huge difference then then again the frequency the reflection coefficient as are going to change so i need to be careful with all minute structure which i have to be possibly uh, depending on then what we did when we took this uh, um, um okay uh, this this material looks very nice it's it's the banyan material a good uh, one of my friend who is uh, right there in the presentation had given me this so with this when we tested uh, yeah stretching and not stretching we checked a lot of things in that and with the gene also so with this gene it it does stretch we can't make out but since we are talking about um, the wavelength or uh, the frequency which is penetrating into it for that it looks like it has a huge room to enter there and all so due to all this thing so we need to take care of this elasticity uh, then what i did, did with this uh, material what i am showing right now the thickness was very small so we made a double layer of uh, these uh, cotton things and then we used it uh, 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 made it a bit rigid so that uh, it does not uh, affect me in the antenna performance and all so as we can see here dielectric fabrics all different types so you can put your uh, hands on uh, all fabrics and see what is happening see even the observation is a research in this so not many uh, yeah I, i have come across a lot of papers which says that using this using this has given this that will also give us a glimpse of uh, understanding of what material should be used what i cannot use which has a very high surface resistivity or something which uh, which is not letting me use it as a dielectric material or something Uh, so these are all uh, dielectric fabrics okay on which antenna can be pasted or you can use conductive fabric uh, readily as it is so these are all the uh, conducting uh, fabric as we can see here uh, any option any anything which you see can uh, conduct which is a fabric you can readily use that <laughs> okay uh, here comes this is just a, a um, procedure of how do i fabricate it and now we have been talking so much about wearable antenna uh, i know how to design an antenna also yeah it's just a copper strip how do i uh, stick these copper sheets on to the uh, so the first very uh, two three ways we have tried now let me just show you so these are all the uh, copper wires okay I, i'm sure you cannot see this thin copper wires which i can use it for embroidery and there's uh, one more conducting thread uh, which can which i can directly use it it's, it's as thin as a normal thread so i all i need to do is uh, you print the shape on your fabric and just trace it um, many things comes in a picture there in what direction are you stitching it okay you need to stitch the embroidery things in the direction wherein the current is flowing so you need to make out where are you giving the port so assume this is my antenna so i'm giving the port at the edge 
So how do I stitch it? Should it be long, uh, vertical? Should it be horizontal? So those things also matter a lot. Okay. Uh, in, this is this is one of the copper tape here. So if your antenna is not complicated, you can readily cut here. So cut this and directly take paste it on your fabric. So that's very easy thing to start with. Or what we did was uh, uh, this is called uh, uh, th th this is a shape of the antenna, which uh, it's just the antenna which I need to put it on different fabric. So since uh, this copper tape we got exposed to rec recently, like a year back or something. The first uh, um, project which was pursued by one of my MTech students, a uh, student. So sh what uh, we did was FR4 in this in its very um, thin layer is called as a pre pick. I'll talk more about it in the next slides. We took that copper sheet and directly pasted it with one of the fabric glue. Then again, this is given by one of my friend. Um, so we just pasted it. Yeah, it. it uh, the performance would definitely change that the glue what we have used would be of a di different dielectric constant uh, we we tried with it we uh, pasted that and saw how much is it impacting me so there are a number of fabrication steps so one by one I'll, i have not used every one of them just listed it down so you we can use a liquid uh, textile adhesive so this is like a liquid textile uh, uh, applies on the conductive layer of the fabric so I have readily taken a conductive fabric, not the dielectric fabric. So as I told you previously, these conductive fabrics. So I just have to spray the um, liquid adhesive onto it. So this liquid adhesive will act as an insulating material. The other part of it is now the conducting threads or conducting fabric or whatever. So that's one shape. Our conductive spray technique. So you get few sprays which... Uh, 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 which can be used, which will be a mixture of copper and gases which, and the you just copper thing which comes out. So that's also an easy thing. Have a mold of your, uh, uh, or have a part of your antenna which needs to be exposed or which needs to be printed on your fabric, just spray on it. E easy, I have not tried it yet. Uh, this is point-wise deposition of conductive adhesive. Adhesive, uh, if I take a fabric, these adhesive are conductive adhesive. So I just have to stick but uh, one challenge with this is I need to maintain the uh, thickness properly. I can't put the adhesive more at one point than the other, but the current distribution, I mean, basically what is uh, antenna structure? You can always convert or call it as a mixture of lumped circuits, right? So those things cannot deteriorate in any way. So this possible, but you need to be very careful with it. <laughs> Method of sewing. So, so wrinkles comes when I'm sewing. So I need to be a very careful when I am doing this. We tried uh, I mean, during the lockdown, since I didn't have any provision, I tried sewing with just whatever handy I had. Uh, it will definitely not work, work. But at least I understood it will not work. So I know what exactly I should do now. Okay. So layer sheet by ironing. So this is uh, also very old way, but a nice way to do it. Um, I just uh, put the copper sheet onto it and iron it. It will stick to it. We we have tried that. My uh, colleague in college, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Premnath and Vishwanath sir, we both tried doing this. Uh, it, it worked, but I have still not tested the antenna for it. Uh, next is copper tape method. I, as I showed you, copper tapes, very easy to do that. I mean, it's it's a tape, uh, it's already glued. So all I need to do is cut it in a shape and just stick it onto the textile material. Yes, then again, uh, when you're uh, connecting a semi-connector to it, soldering, you need to be a bit careful. It's cloth, so you cannot solder it with, I mean, you need to be very, very, very careful when you're soldering the semi-connector to it. Uh, once or twice. Once you burn, once you uh, spoil the cloth, that's okay. You, you, that's where we'll all learn. Okay, this is one very nice saying uh, which uh, always interests me, which says, what makes smart fabrics revolutionary is that they have the ability to do many things that the traditional fabric cannot, which, I mean, I mean it sounds very nice, right? A fabric is now communicating, transforming all the information and it is conducting energy. It sounds very cool, no? I mean, if I tell this to my father, the old-fashioned, huh, your fabric will do all these things. I mean, that that is the face which I really feel good seeing also. 
yeah you know when we thought, think of in that way uh, wearable e textile has its uh, has lot of uh, scope there uh, this just uh, gives a brief of whatever we have studied so far where i can use it and all those things bending needs to be taken care okay so this was a basic study which was done on wearable okay this is what happens i need to take care of so many things something gets shifted so then somewhere i pointed out we need to merge this antenna with the um, ultra wide band antenna also no uh, let's have a frequency uh, wide band antenna a wide band technology incorporated or include with the textile material so that even though the frequency shift happens due to lot of many other reasons it will not affect me a lot so we merged textile antenna the shape was taken as a circular one and we knew the advantage of ultra wide band also it's uh, low power consumption high data so the patient uh, one i mean you need to send lot of data from a patient to someone who is observing it you can do that when i have a um, ultra wide band antennas okay so as i told you the antenna was designed at first so we thought of designing the antenna at 5 gigahertz the radius of the antenna is uh, as such it's a standard frequency which is there to design the circular patch antenna so we initially tried with three fabrics the jean flannel and uh, uh, cotton yeah uh, okay so we calculated all the equations needed uh, to find out the dimension of the antenna and all a simple circular patch we got a wide band then again the gain was very 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 low uh, it was too low probably not even uh, hitting my 10 meters actually so then we thought we need to do something to increase the gain not using the reflector just with the antenna so it was thought why don't we use uh, this was the uh, reference uh, and we uh, some uh, sorry I, saw, I have not cited it uh, this was a standard uh, antenna which was there we thought well why don't we use this for the fabric antenna so we this was designed so this was uh, uh, taken into consideration the same shape slots were designed uh, diamond shaped in center and a semicircular shape any shape all i need to take care when i do slots is make sure your uh, slots are much smaller than the antenna size itself okay so this will uh, these slots will make the current trans traveling inside the circuit uh, retain their due to inductance or reactance whatever has caused inside it uh, which makes the radiation i mean more radiation to come out and hence more will be the gain so this was all the complete dimension of the antenna so three centimeter by three centimeter, and uh, when we used it in uh, HFSs, when we simulated only the antenna, so we got a written loss at five gigahertz of minus twenty three, very good impedance matching. The peak gain was three point two seven, pretty good gain than compared to one dB gain or something. So this was a wide wide band performance. We got the frequency range. From three to seven gigahertz, below minus ten dB, but the best result was at five gigahertz at minus twenty three dB. So as we can see here, okay, we considered from uh, uh, minus ten. If I take, it will easily go from three to something else. So minus twenty. If I look into the uh, graph there, so right from four point three, uh, no, no, M one is what? Yeah, four point three to six point four. So it gave a good wide band. Features. So this, these plots are with respect to my gain and with respect to the VSWR. So Smith chart, you can see the impedance is exactly at 50 ohms. The radiation pattern. Okay, so the, the three-dimensional radiation pattern and the current distribution of the design. So everything was checked in uh, everything was checked with respect to uh, I, I can see few uh, um, chat uh, conversations we will uh, take over one by one once i'm done with the session please post whatever questions you need to we, we will take up one by one later okay 
So this is the peak gain what we got and again the current distribution. And then somehow we were not happy with the structure because that structure was already existing, right? We thought let's make it much more colorful. Let's let's put a lot of slots inside it so that it does not look like an antenna. Well, my I don't know what my student thought. She made too many slots. It, it looked like a weird shape. Now, in, in uh, below is the paper wherein we presented this also. So we got very good, uh, uh, very not very good, very <laughs> weird comments. What made you get into these shape also? Shapes were random. All I needed to take care of was the impedance matching and the gain did not uh, mess around. So that was my, so th that's what uh, it interests us so much, no? The size of the antenna is fixed, yes, but the shape is definitely not uh, not fixed. So you can always uh, play around the shapes so that uh, you get into what, I mean, you uh, end up with what you are expected to happen. So introducing such structure, so which is there here. So this is on a gene material, this is on, on a cotton material. Okay, so the bandwidth increased a lot. So the comparison results are, are in the next slide. So here, what we did was initially when we started, uh, this was the prepeg which was used. So this prepeg is nothing but the copper sheet on a thin, very thin FR4. So the dielectric constant of it is can almost be neglected there. So uh, when I applied a port at the edge of this at at this point at this corner, so. Uh, we we pasted this prepeg, the copper prepeg, onto the fabric through adhesive, and then uh, the same thing happened with the ground plane also. So results of this new antenna when we did was it gave a wider band, and the gain. Look at the gain. The previously it was around three point six dB. Now the gain increased to five dB. So we were very, uh, I mean, uh, confident that this dB gain of antenna will definitely serve as the purpose of a high gain ultra wideband antenna which i can use it for a wearable application we still have not come into the sar part what should i do to reduce it okay the results of the same results of smith chart so this this comparison says tells me what is the uh, performance of it with respect to the proposed i mean uh, the uh, standard antenna and the new antenna which we did the wide the bandwidth increased a lot right it is going beyond the 5 gigahertz uh, sorry 8 gigahertz we just didn't uh, simulate it beyond that so putting more slots you should be careful how do you put the slots where do you put the slots how exactly the current distribution flows inside it if you know that logic you can put the slots and uh, uh, make sure the antenna which is performing on its own you can have a wider bandwidth also then what we did was uh, nowadays it's uh, it's that that we have got a handy on the phantom and all and i can play around it initially we were not i mean we didn't have that uh, provision also so what we did was uh, we designed the human uh, model which uh, includes uh, the skin fat muscle so we found out the dielectric constant loss tangent and the conductivity of all these things we introduced that in the simulation tool where we are using and on that was the antenna there so this helped us uh, to study what is the uh, change in the frequency if it is happening what is the is the uh, it's a homogeneous one just it's a homogeneous one is there any washable conductive tape uh, yes it's it's available so i have not used it yet, but washable conductive tapes, tapes are available um, where was I? Okay, so we placed antenna on top of it and uh, we simulated this to check the change in uh, or the uh, if the written loss is reducing or what's happening to the frequency and everything. So as we can see here, this graph tells me the performance uh, with respect to uh, with and without phantom and the same goes with S parameters. So yes, uh, the bandwidth is band the performance i mean the bandwidth has reduced a bit as we can see here um but yes it's working or operating at the frequency at which we it was designed okay and then the same thing was done with all the fabrics uh, at once so that is the cotton 
flannel jean polyester and also fr4 fr4 is completely gone because the dielectric constant of it is high right so for the same dimension if i use uh, the other material which is having the uh, the uh, um, dielectric constant at 4.4 it, it didn't work so these are all the antennas which we have fabricated the simple uh, um, circular one gotten into a shape of some weird nice performance at me. so this is what was tested uh, at iac bangalore so uh, we tested the antenna as such for its performance through the vector network analyzer we checked it uh, my friend my student was very bold enough to tell that ma'am whatever happens i am ready to test the antenna uh, very thanks to her <laughs> so no 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 we knew nothing will happen to her okay <laughs> Okay, so with all these different fabric, when the antenna was placed on it, the yes, the imp uh, impedance matching changed, but did not go below minus 10 dBm. So we were happy with that. So hence, when we were uh, designing a single antenna, antenna itself, we made sure that um, return loss is minus 20, minus 30, minus 40 dB. So hence, when we place here, even though there's some absorption and all happening, so it didn't uh, matter much with the uh, reflection coefficient. So impedance matching almost at 50 ohms, VSWR is there. So th these are the two major fabric which we use for comparison also. The flannel one, which is here, and the uh, jeans one. So the texture of flannel is very homogeneous, not like jean. Hence, the conductivity or the performance of flannel fabric was much better than the jean. Um, so this just gives me a comparison of uh, what I got in the simulation, what I got in the fabrication, uh, what I got at the measured, both, both with antenna as such and with the human uh, phantom also. So this was a radiation pattern which was um, tested in an anechoic chamber. So, so to conclude with, uh, wearable antennas plays a very important role in knowing uh, or understanding a lot of things communication as a as as uh, as a different thing will definitely happen communication on, on its own can easily happen the other part what i have to look into is many many other things uh, as let, let me just okay sorry so what is the um, bending thing what how does it affect if the moisture content is on it so if I, I mean, conformal is always nice for me, but how is it affecting in, in, in another way? So those things can be taken care of. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is a part of the funded project, which wherein we have started the work, uh, we have started the work on wearable antenna long back. So we had, a, uh, we got a funding also. So to completely set up the, or to design the flexible wearable antenna for uh, dynamic IoT connectivity. So we are planning to do it for a body area network, personal area network, find out what exactly is happening with all these things. Okay, so that's all about my work on uh, wearable antenna so far. So we can have a discussion now. I... Yeah, I, I, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, see, each part of your body has got different different epsilon. Mm -hmm. In that mm -hmm. case, will you take uh, effective epsilon or related epsilon? Uh -huh. Every part of your body has got different different epsilon. Yes, uh, sir. Including the brain. It comes to 50. So effectively, will you take uh, effective epsilon or uh, relative epsilon? Or? Uh... That's what I have not yet considered the heterogeneous structure, sir. We started our project with the homogeneous structure, so assuming that relative permittivity is constant. So probably we, we started with that. Now we are concentrating upon uh, the muscle wherein we are fixing the uh, effective dielectric constant and then pursuing the research onto it. Oh, one small question out of uh, curiosity. Mm -hmm. uh, see, we, we produce all those things. Now. So many good papers are coming. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Is, there, is there any medical center in India where they have used, where the doctors have accepted wearable antennas? Uh -huh. um, no, sir, I am not aware of it. 
uh, yes we have def- we i mean we ourselves in our college have uh, contacted our hospital ramaya hospital they the doctors were I spoke to one of the doctor that they were very interested if as long as the patient is not affected with the radiation i mean probably we need to take the prototype and then con- contact them so we would definitely have the opportunity for it sir um, as long as we we uh, um, satisfies these basic parameters of uh, uh, sar and those things and all um, yes variable seems all, all this sar vswr you got 1.04 these are all papers uh-huh. but can it be applied or is it being applied in any of the hospital in india uh, no 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 i am not aware of that sir no i don't understand okay thank you thank you thank you sure sir hello stay madam hello madam yeah please please tell me yeah hello. Uh, i am punit from sat tumkur ma aha tell me sir nice presentation <laughs> you actually have you taken the effect of radiation pattern on bending of your uh, that wearable antenna because yes even in the patch side or in the ground side hmm. what is the effect of radiation pattern uh, radiation pattern would uh, it would change its uh, uh, uh when we design the antenna when we designed the antenna and placed it on human body we made sure to let the radiation pattern be parallel to the uh, human body axis so when the bending was considered the radiation pattern changed a lot so unfortunately few of my bending results were in co- my college itself so next time if possible i'll show you but yes there is a huge impact of radiation pattern on the bending so uh simulations i have i have not a- yet tested it practically with uh, vna or something putting it bending it so with uh, simulations uh, the characteristics changed a lot sir so we we tried to bend it at different uh, angles so is depends upon how you are bending it also are you bending only the edges or are you bending it as on a surface uh, the bit, and how are you bending it is it towards the port side or is it towards the other side so the hence positioning of the antenna also matters a lot so depending upon whether if if assume i have the antenna like this and i am placing it here it would make a difference than p- placing it here because bending would be in this way here the bending is in this way so uh, many things would be, should be you know, to be taken care of when we are doing it okay and one more question when you um, place the antenna like with reflector in order to um, protect your yeah, Uh, so, Shweta, just to add on to what he is asking, ah, sir, ah, sir. probably, probably some studies can be done mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where these bending effects are there, and what way it, how much it affects that one. The corrective measures can be maybe built in the system itself later on. Okay, have we uh-huh. adopted something like a study of the environment uh-huh. and then to give a correction to the pattern? Okay. okay, suppose I reduce the gain in this one. Okay, this bending is this much gain is reduced. So. Mm-hmm. accordingly boost it up to that level something mm-hmm. those things can be a other area for the for tomorrow's research in that direction okay correct correct and also madam uh, you said that uh, some reflector is placed to protect the body to reflect back the radiation yeah so so, so and also you told that uh, uh, some absorption will be happened like that correct so, correct when absorption is happened the heating effect will come to the body so any measurement care taken okay the temperature getting heated no sir no sir that we have not bothered all all we have done is uh, we designed a, a frequency selective structure so this was exactly placed below the antenna so uh, practically also we have uh, tested this that yes yes is say i mean yeah the gain increased so the reflectivity in in uh, sar all i could do was with the simulation we still haven't got the uh, real 3d heterogeneous prototype to a phantom to test so i um, i wish we get that as soon as possible and uh, practically if we prove that if it, this can work whatever we have done with simulation that would help us a lot in uh, even approaching it to be a, a product or use it practically anywhere excuse me madam ah uh, may know how to measure the dielectric properties of the textile material electrical properties of the textile material a uh, few dielectric uh, material uh, tester are there sir um, um keysight has that equipment wherein we can check the dielectric material 
uh, I was given the privilege once to go and check the material as such for one or two fabric. The rest, what I have done with the simulation is all with the database, what is available, sir. So we okay. need to have that uh, instrument to test. Either, I mean, they had the option to either test the uh, solid or the liquid also. So the other question is uh, whether uh, we suggest uh, ultra wideband antenna for IoT based application. Usually, they may require a smaller bandwidth. Antenna is smaller yeah. bandwidth. Uh -huh. Then yeah. how to suggest this antenna for uh, IoT uh, no, based? No, ultra wideband is not necessary, sir. Yeah, it's it's just that when we started the project and we came across that the frequency is shifting so much, so we thought let's make it a wideband. Definitely not ultra wideband is not needed. But since we went into circular shape, it readily gave gave me ultra wideband. So, uh, hence, uh, see, uh, in the result, when we, if we see the, the same ultra wideband antenna, when we are putting it on skin, the bandwidth or the bandwidth has completely re reduced. So, yeah, so we started with the ultra wideband and end up, ended up with at least some wideband application there. Okay. The, yeah, as long as if we can tackle the frequency shift, why it is happening, what can I do to change it with the resonant frequency itself, that is enough, sir. We need not go to ultra wideband. Oh, okay, man. Some external signal may be added with this uh, uh, translated. That's why. Ha ha ha. Correct. Uh, madam, namaste, madam. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, uh -huh. How do you connect this SNA connector uh, foil, uh, copper foil that you showed? Okay. Uh, uh, because foil uh, is very, very thin. So, how are you yeah. going to give the connection to this uh, foil, madam? Uh, uh -huh. Have you done it uh, uh, by yourself? We have done it with the soldering only, sir. We very carefully we made sure it, it is connected there. Okay. We tried to do it and test it with VNA. Wow, it didn't work out at all. Mm. With it any performance. So we soldered it, sir. We I mean we we burnt it, a lot it, it, of it. in the process. Okay. <laughs> but yes, soldering was the could be possible. Wonderful, madam. So give yes. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, madam, I have a question. Uh-huh. Uh, was there any mismatch of the result? Because when you simulate, for example, whatever you are doing is for 5 gigahertz simulation. Once you manufacture the antenna and test it in an anechoic chamber, do you get exactly 5 uh, what the design was there in uh, simulation or was there any mismatch? Uh, no, sir. We didn't get the deviation with respect to frequency when we uh, fabricated and checked. But yes, the return loss was not as good as it was in simulation. So what if if we get suppose I simulate for five gigahertz huh? uh, by any reason be due to the soldering effect or some other uh, connectivity and all uh, SMA connection and all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some impedance mismatch if I get four point eight gigahertz or I may get five point one or uh, near to that five okay okay is it okay no sir because few transceivers if I want to check there are they are at exact those frequency only two point five or whatever two point four gigahertz. Or, uh, I mean, so even this small deviation would uh, matter to us a lot. So probably we'll have to go back, redo that, and then again come back. So now when you say it as, uh, if, if in a very simple way, if I want to tell, if the frequency has gone down, then probably you can try to increase the ground plane or if, if the ground plane is not complete. Uh, the antenna, what I have designed, uh, the ultra wideband antenna need not have a complete ground. So ground is cut. So, so what you can do is, yeah, the only option what I can think of is go back, uh, redo the design, and then again uh, try with uh, this. Yeah, with simulation, uh, it does good. Um, but after manufacturing and testing in anechoic chamber. Uh, sir, usually frequency would not shift so much uh, with fabrication. The, there will be a compromise with written impedance matching, okay. but frequency shifting is... Uh, mm, no, that, that may be not due to fabrication or maybe human error while soldering. Uh, it might be okay. uh, because we cut maybe, slots maybe, and maybe, we will yeah. have... Yeah. Solder thickness also matter. That yeah, should yeah. itself be a part of antenna then. Yeah, even while soldering, one mm of that soldering uh, correct, metal correct. passes on left or right, mm -hmm. then it will really affect a lot. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I, I have a, one inquiry. What would be the value of mass density of jeans fabric? Uh, yeah, I read that here. Sir, I exactly don't know how much is the mass density, but I can provide you all the uh, data sheet of all the fabric. 
right from its yeah. depth, dielectric loss, dielectric uh, constant loss. Yeah. Conductivity, the conductivity, delta H, Landage effect, etc. Uh, magnetic saturation. Share the material with everyone, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, on what basis are the slots created uh, uh, to get the desired shape? Okay, uh, logic involved. Uh, see, the moment I put slots inside, it would give rise to reactance. The, the one advantage of making slots is my bandwidth will be good, my gain will increase. But again, there, there's a huge compromise with impedance matching because for me, when I'm designing an antenna, it should be pure resistive. Yeah. When I make the slots, it means that part of structure is no more involved in the antenna now. So it, it's giving rise to reactance. Either it could be capacitance or inductance. So when you are making the size of the slot, a much smaller than the antenna size itself, it induces some inductance into it. So current lags, current gets retained in the circuit for a longer time and hence more radiation and hence more gain. So this is all abruptly I've understood. What kind of shape uh, some article I came across which says different shape to different uh, lump circuits. So once you know how to convert your actual antenna into lump circuits, then you can find out and play around what are these slots actually coming into picture. So that was one question there. Uh, which point should be okay? SAR, how do how to find SAR value? Okay, so I, if you know the conductivity, mass density, and all, you can find out through calculation. But if I really want to know, um, till now I have still I've only got the provision privilege to work on SAR only till simulation part. I have as such not. Uh, um not got any equipment or something wherein i can test sar on a practical point um, no uh, what are the dimensions or property should be taken for ultra wide band uh, there's there's an adhesive glue um I don't remember its name. I can share that with you, which 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 was used in some some of the some, one of the very good journal paper, which where they told that the dielectric constant of that glue is almost equal to one. So you can use it as readily as possible. Just that you need to take care of its thickness, make sure it's evenly put. So that that adhesive name I'll share with you very soon. The simulation tool which I'm using right now is HFSS version 19. Oh, lot of lot of things are there in that. Probably I'm not much exposed to even 50% um, uh, of it. A lot of things are there, especially with respect to you. You can completely import the whole human body, place your antenna wherever you want, completely study that. So this version 19 has that privilege of uh, yeah, all these things. Any other questions? Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Dr. Shweta from MRS Clipview, Bachinda, Punjab. Uh huh. Uh, uh -huh. I was having a question. Uh -huh. uh, how we can measure the polarization? Okay. Okay. Polarization. Uh, how do you understand, or what was the question? How would you find out the polarization of an antenna? Okay. Uh, by if it is through simulation, then you can easily make out through axial ratio. Uh, yeah. Uh, practically, uh, I'm not sure. So you with the res uh, simulation the results. The uh, Sorry, your voice is breaking. I'm so sorry. How we can measure it now? Okay, measuring um, polarization, no, maybe in uh, an echoic chamber, once we uh, get the radiation pattern through that, we'll check. I am not much sure about it. 
Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. You are doing very well. Thank you. So this is what is happening is it's a polarization connected with reference to your electric field, like to this one. Mm -hmm. And if we are radiating enzyme, we take it and in front of the probe, we will put it and rotate it. We mm -hmm. can definitely find where the event is. This one is coming back. That will indirectly give the this one. And it will both on calibrations and other things will precisely give the um, so called which, uh, which way it is polarized. Mm -hmm. And even there, there is no direct instrument, even then we can add on to it as a practical measurement. And because the receive antenna, whatever probe we are putting, or receive this one, well, their characteristic is well known to us, let us say. Okay. So depending on that polarization, with reference to that, what is coming from there, then we rotate or we change it. In a this one. You should be able to, we should be able to find it. Oh. Or we take a two orthogonal components out of base and then try to do the vector analysis on that. We'll find which vector it is going. Mm -hmm. And orthogonality concept can be made use. Okay. Okay. Sir. okay sir. Thank you. Yeah. I think the simplest method is to do a rotating dipole. See, you know the rotating dipole. Okay, mm -hmm. if it's a circular polarized one, you will get that axle ratio, you can easily find out. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it is not circular polarized, it is a linear polarized, it directly gives the for whichever vector it is exactly matched, you will get the best output. Okay, mm -hmm. suppose uh, so the, the rotating dipole is the simplest method for without measuring the phase, you can do it very fast. Okay, that is the, the simplest method which people use to find out what is the polarization. Oh, okay. So, so here, uh, I wanted to ask one more thing. This uh, characterization which you are doing is, you, we assume that you made a normal antenna with the proper ground plane, and mm -hmm. then you have the fabricate underneath. Yeah, yeah. Your fabric is underneath. So Correct. the fabric itself, the fabric is uh, after the ground plane, uh, isn't it? No, sir. The fabric oh, no. is in between the antenna in and the between. Fabric is between the antenna and the ground plane. So where is the ground plane? Is beneath the fabric. Yeah, behind the fabric. Yeah, on top of the fabric is the antenna. Behind the fabric is the ground plane. Behind the fabric. So how do you really make it? Suppose you want to wear it on the sleeve of uh, on your body. Huh. Okay. How do you take it back? Okay. See, see the displacement becomes a problem. Yes. No? Yeah. Yeah. See, correct. Yeah. Fabric. Fabric is in between, and then you hand again there is a ground plane. Hmm. And the ground plane is generally it, it is metallic, so the yes. metal is directly in contact with your body. Just body, oh. yeah. So yes. this so that is yeah. what is the problem. No. Uh -huh. Or what we can do is we can put this on another fabric again, sir. Yes, so that's what we can have other fabric, or we can think about that just like a, on a metal we put a uh, coating, non-conducting coating type of thing. So that type of fabric can be a part of that behind that. Correct. Sir, so a anyway, uh, lot of uh, experiments need to be done. Correct, sir. Correct. Lot of experiments need to be done because it is uh, it is a topic which is really coming up. See, one of the simplest thing is to have some sort of barcode which they can detect the presence of a person. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That is one very very simple one where you have that in the variable one. Okay. You have some sort of barcode with which you can detect. That is ah. the first level of things which people are already using it. Correct, 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 sir. Either it is there in your eye card mm -hmm. or you wear it on your wrist. Okay, okay. So, so that is for uh, uh, entering, not only entering the main gate, mm -hmm. there are many places where there are restricted areas. Mm -hmm. So wherever you enter, it gets, uh, uh, this thing, the system knows where you have moved up. Okay, okay, okay. So that, that is one very good uh, area where you can have. Apart from yes. that, anyway, medical applications are extraordinary unless, but we cannot do it un until we are sure about everything, specifically the specific absorption rate. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. How, how you have to make sure that it is safe to the human being. Correct, sir. Correct. That is absolutely essential because without that and that too, it may be very like one, what Professor Raghavan also pointed out, the directory yes. constant is different mm -hmm. and it may, it may not be same for everybody. Each person is different. Correct. So you must find out that uh, range of uh, uh, dielectric constants for which you have to see. 
Yes, sir. And yes, sir. As Bhatia Sahib was also saying, we had to do some sort of adaptive methods to get it done. It's a very good, very good area of research. I think you can put different students in different areas yeah. and then get the input from all of them together. And then it has to be backed with some good results. Exactly. So now you are, you are thrown up a lot of problems. No, yeah. they, they need to be resolved. Nice. Very good. Uh, right, no, right. It, it is something like that, you know, we just do a initialization of this one or calibration of the system yeah. or something like that. In that domain, it will fall that, okay, we take the, both the corrections and do the matching and do the correction before it is actually put into use. Mm. Yeah, yeah and that they, is true. Uh, our uh, tailors have to become smart also. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, designer, real designer. So. You know, it's a very good area where we yeah, need to be. A lot of things to explore and find out. Yeah, and that too, and uh, many of them have not explored the big extent, but you can see some people who have really done a lot of work on that. Yes. And one person which I told you was is Professor Shankar Lingam. Uh -huh, uh, I'll, I'll try and get his name, mail if possible to you. Definitely, definitely. So that you can directly yes. talk to him because I I remember he did this uh, PhD because I, why I knew is because we did some measurements for him. Mm -hmm. Take care. Okay. We were not part of the measurement. We just uh -huh. gave him the facility. Yeah. To we didn't want to probe into what someone is doing a phd because that should be a breach of this thing so uh -huh. we gave the facility to him to do the work but uh, i i know that he has got his phd already so possibly he is one person who can whom you can talk to also sure sure definitely uh, uh, he's a principal now in virudhanagar college see uh -huh. see also professor raghavan has told you who he is where he is awesome. so you can possibly contact him definitely definitely sir sure yeah sure. I think uh, that's the questions, I guess, that uh, we conclude now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the talk was very interesting. I could see a lot of people are uh, getting motivated. And, uh, very, 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 so, okay. Thank you, very much. thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, so, Patil. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, please take some rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, sir. So, the two. Uh, Girls are waiting there to eat my head right now. Probably I'll lock the room and sleep here only. <laughs> <laughs> they also they also have a right on you, no? <laughs> you cannot deny that. <laughs> I think once you play with them, I think you will relax, you don't need sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so so nice. Give them two lollipops and you take that by <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank bye, Adam, sir. Bye. Okay, Shay. Yes, sir. I'm just saying, okay, then we can go. Yeah, now. Yeah. Surely, sir, we'll meet tomorrow, sir. I, I, I have put up the video and also the this one and uh, took my lunch. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so that <laughs> others should not get tempted to take them. No? It was with a Rajma and other things. Okay, sir. Okay, right.